Hi and welcome to my video from the 2017 World Cup in Tongyong. I've got a really good start on the swim and which was able to catch up to the feet of swim superstar Aurélien Raphael from France right away. So I was in the best position and was able to go into cruise control after 100 meters and just swim along. After pulling the wetsuit off, the bike race began. As you can see, right on the beginning, I almost crashed into, into the barriers on the left side because I'm always slipping right into my shoes without using my hands. And right after that, it's just giving it all to catch up to the two in front. And I got one guy uh, in my draft, it's Martin van Riel from Belgium. And that was the lead pack. My power meter needed some time to pair with the camera, so we got no wattage um, at the beginning. But believe me, um, also the first 30 seconds was between 500 and 600 watts. And now I'm tr just trying to catch up to the two guys in front. And as you can see, it's all between 400 and 600 watts. So when I finally caught up, I already had a huge effort in my legs. But obviously it's just so motivating to be in a four-man breakaway because if you get off the bike with like one minute advantage over the main pack, there's basically no chance of anybody catching you and you're a guaranteed fourth place. And on the first few K there's no looking back anyways because you just have to settle in and look how the race unfolds. So we were getting into some kind of groove and everybody was doing their share of the work. So there was this one steep hill that you had to ride up two times each lap and there was three laps so it was six times in total going up that hill. As you can see it's not really fast because it's like 15 to 17 percent gradient but the wattage of course is just killing your legs. The downhill coming right after the hill was the first time that I was able to uh, uh, not pedal and so relax for the first time for a few seconds and that was basically it for the first lap. After the turning point you can see the chase park which is not very far behind. It's just maybe five seconds, five to ten seconds. And the Danish guy, Andreas Schilling, um, was in front right now. He was actually coming from that first chase park and managed to pull ahead. And after that the chase park got a little slower and we got to a 20 second advantage after the first lap. Shoutouts to Taylor Reed also, the Kiwi guy right in front. He was really strong on the bike and helped a lot. And also Andreas Schilling from Denmark. They were pushing the most in our small little breakaway group. So here we're coming back to the transition zone area and my legs were already quite tired but we had an advantage of about 20 seconds at this point of the race and as I told before there were three laps to go on the bike and this was the completion of the first lap so we had to go around a small turn around and then go back to the transition area.
So here we are after almost one and a half laps on the bike. In front is the second turnaround. And this is the next chance to see the main chase pack. And sadly, when I um, had the first look while going back, I saw that the chase pack was only 5 to 10 seconds away. So they caught up uh, more than 10 seconds on the last half lap. That meant that they were probably quite motivated to catch up and the only two chances of getting away with a small breakaway is either the chase pack not working well together or the lead pack having just the most stellar bikers. So here we are, I'm already struggling to keep up with the three guys in front and then I had a look back and saw that the chase crew got even closer to us so I decided that they would catch us anyways and I dropped back as well as the French guy Aurélien Raphael. Actually this French guy was the one winning in the end so probably he did the best to um, let him fall back as well. As you see there was one Belgian guy catching up to the leaders so they were four again but they were eventually caught after a good two laps. So when I got back to the chase pack, I almost didn't have to do anything anymore because, uh, because of all the draft, it's just so easy to ride along. And that's also the thing that uh, makes you just demotivated in the race when you see what all the other guys were pushing, probably uh, during the catching up, and what I was doing in the front in the big group. As you can see in a big group it's usually only going uphill which is very hard um, putting in like 500 to 700 watts but then the rest is all very easy. Sadly my legs were already tired from the breakaway and I had to match it with those guys um, most of them probably being rested after just an easy ride along with a big group and here we are almost at the end of the bike. Everybody is trying to get a good position going into T2. And there was still this one uh, turnaround to go around. And then it's basically only uh, 300 meters to go until the transition zone. So everybody's shoes were already open. And now it's time to go out of the shoes, as you can see. And it's always a little hectic and uh, you always have to be careful that there's no crash in front of you. Actually you see uh, inside the transition zone that one guy is losing his shoe but luckily there was no crash this time. So just wrecking the bike left and then out onto the run which I finished in 15th position which wasn't great but um, it was another solid result and after the breakaway on the bike my legs were just too tired so I gotta be happy with at least some important points for the world ranking and next race will, will be Olympic distance in Japan next week and this should usually suit me more so see you then and thanks for watching